G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and today I'll be taking you through Journey Builder and introducing you to some of its features and functions so that you are ready to start building your own journeys in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So to begin with, what is Journey Builder? Well, Journey Builder is the communication orchestration component of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. It gives marketers the ability to create sequences of events which they can use to initiate and respond to interactions made by their subscribers. So in other words, you can use Journey Builder as a tool to chain together multiple individual decisions and communications to create elaborate sequences of engagement and interactions for your subscribers. So in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, we can access Journey Builder by going to our top left hand side and hovering over the blue cloud and scrolling across to our Journey Builder icon and then down to Journey Builder. And once this page loads, you'll find yourself on the Journey Dashboard. This is your main landing page for Journey Builder. You'll find on this screen all the journeys ordered by name, also with their status, number of current records in the journey, and their last modified date. Now, as you make more and more journeys, it's a good idea to use the folders function to organize your journeys. You can hover over the side here and you can create additional folders to organize your journeys. Over on the right-hand side, we can also filter our journeys. We have lots to search through. We can go through and only select multi-step, single or transactional and organize them by their status, such as draft, sent, or paused. If you know the name of the journey, you can also use the search journey function to search the name of your journey. But to best describe how Journey Builder works, let's start off by making our very own journey. We can do this by going to the top right hand side and going create new journey. Now on this screen, we have three options. We can create a multi-step journey, a single send journey, or a transactional send journey. Now for today, we'll use the multi-step but to take you quickly through it, the single send journey allows you to send a single email, SMS, or push notification to your subscribers using Journey Builder. And the transactional send is used for your API transactional messages, similar to things like your password reset emails. But again, for today, we'll use the multi-step journey. So we'll click that option and then click on create. And once the page loads, you'll find yourself on the journey canvas screen. So let me take you through what the interface has to offer. On the top, we have our journey name, which you can modify with a little pencil here. You can change our journey name. We can go across and see what version our current journey is in. We are currently in the toggle sidebar for edit mode. We can toggle our sidebar there. We can choose to copy activities from our canvas as we put canvas activities on. We can set our goals. We can also set our exit criteria. So a really important function here is the journey settings. We can open journey settings by clicking the journey settings button here. Once we're inside, you can see all the settings for our current journey. Now, the first one is the contact entry. We can choose how our contacts are allowed to re-enter this activity. We can choose to allow no re-entry. So once a contact goes into the journey, they can never re-enter ever again. We can choose to re-enter any time, which can allow some contacts to be in the journey more than once at a time. Alternatively, you can say only re-enter after exiting, which ensures that you will never have the same contact in the journey more than once. And below this is our default email address selector. Here we can choose one of the fields from our incoming data to use as our main email address for our subscribers. Alternatively, we can use the default email address from our contacts model. Now below that is the same thing, this time for the mobile phone number, allowing us to choose one of our incoming data fields or to use the default from our contacts. And finally, we have our Google Analytics integration, which if you have it turned on, you can choose to track the links for messages in this journey. After this, we can go back onto our main journey canvas. You can see our final few buttons here, the ability to save or to save as template for this journey, to validate or to check to make sure that our current journey is gonna work as intended, a test option to allow us to test our journey with a test record. And finally, once we're all ready to go, we can press the activate button to activate our journey. And on the left-hand side, we have our journey activities and these come in a few different types. To start with, we have our entry sources. This is the way that our subscribers come into the journey. Below that, we have our activities, starting with our messages and the different channels of communication we can send in this journey. We also have our advertising campaign activities. Below that is our flow controls, the ability to split and merge and choose different decisions for our subscribers to go down. We have our contact updates for our subscribers, the ability to send personalization activities in Salesforce or update our data extensions. We also have our integration with our sales and service cloud using the Marketing Cloud Connector. Now you may not have all these activities active in your Journey Builder Canvas. Each of these activities will become enabled based on what you've purchased and what other Marketing Cloud functions you have enabled. Which of course brings us to the main canvas for our journey. 
And here's where we can drag and drop these tiles from the left hand side onto our main journey canvas to create our journeys. All right, so now that we know how Journey Builder works and how it looks, let's have a deep dive into each of the activities so we understand how we can add our subscribers to our journeys and how we can engage with them with our various messages and flow controls. So to start with, let's have a look at our entry sources. Now our first one is the API event. And the API event allows us to connect our Journey Builder to an API which we can call through the REST API in Marketing Cloud. You can see here on this interface any existing API events we've created Alternatively, you can create yourself a brand new API event, which you can then call through the REST API. Next, we have the audience entry source. Now, audiences allow us to add our audiences from Contact Builder into our Journey Builder. I've used my filtered mobile lists to create two audiences so far. If you click on this activity, you can see here I've got two mobile connect audiences for my all contacts and marketing lists. Next, we have our Cloud Pages entry source. The Cloud Pages entry source allows us to use a Smart Capture Cloud page that we've created in our Cloud Pages to submit a form which will submit that record into our Journey Builder. I don't have any Cloud Pages created as a Smart Capture form at the moment, but if I was to, you could select that Cloud Page form here and use it as your entry source for the journey. Next, we have our Data Extension entry source. You can use our Data Extension entry source to choose any data extension that is sendable our marketing cloud to add those subscribers into our journey. We can also use the filter contacts option here to apply a filter to that entry source to only let in records that apply to your current filter. And finally, once you choose your data extension, you can also choose to refresh it using an automation to re let those records in every time that automation runs. This is perhaps my favorite journey entry source as it allows for some really good flexibility by using SQL and Automation Studio to enter your records into your journeys. Next up is the event entry source. Now the event entry source allows us to use a connected data extension and to choose a date attribute from that data extension which will allow any subscribers that match that date into your journey. Now you can also configure that date to occur a number of days before or after your date. For example, for a birthday journey, you could choose a subscriber's birth date and then choose to enter them into the journey 14 days before their birth date allowing you to communicate them before their birthday and send them vouchers or invitations. The Google Analytics 360 entry source allows you to set up audiences in GA360 and one of your subscribers clicks on your email and then goes to your website and satisfies the criteria to add them to one of those audiences but then adds them to your journey builder activity the very next day. The inbound chat journey activity allows you to enter new records into your journey based on a WhatsApp inbound chat. This occurs when one of your subscribers sends you a WhatsApp communication which triggers one of your keywords, thus entering them into your journey. Next up is the Salesforce Audience Studio entry source. This allows you to connect to your Salesforce Audience Studio or your DMP, formerly known as Crux, and any audiences that you've set up and configured in that audience platform, once they meet the condition of the audience, can then be sent through into your journey builder and entered into your journey. And finally, we have in my opinion, the most powerful entry source, that is the Salesforce data entry source. Now this one's really cool as we have multiple ways to interact with it. To start with, we can use the Salesforce data entry source here to specify an object within our Salesforce CRM. Whenever one of those objects gets modified or created, it adds that record into our journey. We can also use our Salesforce communities using our Community Cloud integration and finally, we can also use our campaign member integration to add new subscribers into this journey based on their campaign member activities. And with the entry sources all covered, let's now have a look at our activities, starting with our message types. So for messages, we can send an email to our subscribers who come through our journey. We can also use the mobile app SDK to send an in-app message, an inbox message, or a push notification to a connected mobile device. We can also use the SMS function to send a long or short code through Mobile Connect to our subscribers. And finally, we can use the WhatsApp interface here to use our business account to send a WhatsApp message to our connected subscribers. Next up is our advertising activities, which allow us to connect our journey builder to our advertising audiences. First up is the add audience activity, which allows us to add subscribers who come through this journey to an existing or to a new advertising audience which you can then publish to our chosen social media platform. 
The next one is the ad campaign, which allows us to create an advertising campaign in Facebook, then add those subscribers who come through the journey into that campaign. And now we come to our flow controls. Now our flow controls are a powerful part of Journey Builder that allow us to create our various paths for our subscribers to go down based on their data and interactions. To start with, we have our decision split. Now this split allows us to choose various rules and create various paths for our subscribers to go down. I can make one criteria for path one, another criteria for path two, and so on and so forth, where all subscribers who do not match these previous criteria sets will go down the remainder path. Next up is the Einstein STO activity. Now the Einstein send time optimization does what it says. It optimizes what time each subscriber should receive that email to have the maximum chance of them opening the email. This works by Salesforce Marketing Cloud indexing the opens from each inbox. When you use this tile, it holds that subscriber back until it reaches that day of week or time of day and that subscriber is most likely to open your email and then sends it. The engagement split activity allows you to create different paths based on how your subscribers engage with an email within your journey. You can choose to engagement split based on opens and clicks and specific clicks on specific links. For example, you can use the engagement split activity to create a reminder email if your subscribers fail to open or click the original email in your journey. The frequency split activity allows you to tap into the Einstein frequency scoring function in Marketing Cloud creating different paths for various subscriber saturation rates. For example, you can use this activity to prevent sending to subscribers who are already oversaturated and only send this activity to those who may be undersaturated. The join activity allows you to join two paths back together again in your journey builder. For example, if I use my random split activity to split up my path into two 50-50 paths, I can then use the join activity to join them back together again by dropping the tile into one path and joining it back to the other path. The Path Optimizer activity is your built-in A-B testing for Journey Builder. The Path Optimizer allows you to choose two or more paths which you can create yourself, run your journey, and then later on come back in and declare a winning path. Once you do this, the losing paths will be cut off and no more subscribers can go down those paths. All remaining subscribers who come through your journey will go through the winning path to ensure you get the maximum performance from your journey. The scoring split works in a similar way to the frequency split activity. It allows you to tap into Einstein and choose a scoring based on a subscriber's likeliness to open, click or unsubscribe on your emails. For example, you could use the scoring split activity to create different paths based on their subscriber's likeliness to open or click an email. You could use a more engaging subject line or perhaps an incentive if they are less likely to open or click that email. And now we come to the weight activities in Journey Builder. Now these six weight activities all have different functions. For example, the weight by duration allows you to wait for a specific number of minutes, hours or days before the subscriber can go to the next step. The weight by attribute allows you to choose an attribute from the subscriber's data and to wait until or for that duration of time. Wait until chat response only functions in line with your WhatsApp chat responses. The wait until date allows you to specify a particular date in your journey and all subscribers will wait on that spot until that date occurs. The wait until event allows you to specify an API trigger activity and all subscribers will wait at that event until an API trigger occurs and then they can proceed. And finally, the wait until push engagement will wait for that subscriber until a push engagement occurs for that record. On to our customer updates and our first update activity is the Salesforce personalization activity. This activity allows us to connect to our Salesforce personalization, also known as Interaction Studio, and send data from our Marketing Cloud Journey Builder into our Interaction Studio profiles. And we also have the update contact activity. We can use this activity to update a data extension inside Marketing Cloud with attributes from the subscriber as they go through the journey. And finally, we come to our Sales and Service Cloud activities. Now these ones, as the tiles suggest, allow us to interact with each of these objects inside of our Sales and Service Cloud. For example, we can use the Case activity here to create or update an existing case in Service Cloud. We can also use the Task action to create or modify an existing task against our CRM contact as they go through the journey. 
And there we have it. That is the introduction and overview of the activities and data entry events in Journey Builder. Now there are other types of data entry events and activities, and they're always adding new ones. So make sure you check back on the documentation so that you're up to date as to see what activities you can have access to inside Journey Builder. If you enjoyed the video today and it's helped you out, then please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. I intend to make more videos on Journey Builder, so make sure you're subscribed so that you're notified when I release more Marketing Cloud videos.